Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And a happy rally day to all of us as we gather together as the people of God and to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I um, want to remind you, today is, of course, rally day in our 930 service. Um, we will have a prayer at the end of the service, which will be our table prayer. So when you head downstairs, which you can use both uh, stairways uh, to go downstairs, you can go ahead and get your food and start eating. So we will have a mealtime prayer uh, towards the end of our service today. Also, as an awareness, if need be, our overflow, if uh, we run out of space downstairs, our overflow will be in the gathering place, and that is also where we have bingo uh, later today as one of our games as well. So gathering place for that. We do have uh, a couple announcements. Uh, Joan Holland first. Joan, Joni? There you are, okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, this coming Saturday is the big day to uh, pack the rice kits for the Kids Against Hunger. We had our big garage sale and all the proceeds that we made from that will go to help buy the rice and all the supplies for the kits. The truck will roll in this Saturday at 8 a.m. We need people to put labels on bags, set up tables, get all the equipment out and set up the way that Mike Burwell wants it. Um, so we can use your help at eight. If you're able to stay the whole shift, we like to try to be done by noon. If we have a lot of people, a lot of hands working in this, we will be done by noon. If not, it will be a little later. But if you can only stay for an hour, two hours, three hours, hey, we will appreciate any work that we can get from any of you. So please get your children, families, and get everyone lined up. And don't forget, 8 o'clock this coming Saturday. And I appreciate anyone's help. And if you have any questions, give me a call. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Joan. Kids Against Hunger, Rice Kits, Saturday. This Saturday, 8 o'clock. Carrie, if you please come forward with your announcement. If you turn with me to page two in your bulletin, uh, Worship and Music Committee is wanting to try something for a number of weeks, so we're sort of uh, testing the waters here. And that will be, a uh, Carrie is going to be our lector for today. So you will see at the top of the page, we're going to try this for a number of weeks called the Prayer of Illumination. Sometimes we can get into a bit of a, too much of a comfortable routine in worship and it's like, okay, now it's time for the reading of God's word, that's just another portion of matters. So we're trying to place more of an emphasis on the importance of how we have this as part of our worship with the Bible readings. Uh, so Carrie will read that a brief intro and explanation of which then we as the congregation will respond with that prayer and then she will have the Bible reading. So just want to make sure you know that ahead of time. On page five, uh, just to uh, give you a quick heads up, and as you've seen on the screens, uh, that youth night begins this coming Wednesday, so things are up and running. We're at that time of the year. Saturday, as you heard with Joan Holland about the Kids Against Hunger Rice Kits, that's at 8 o'clock. Next Sunday, our Sunday school begins, 9.15 to 10.15 for children, and also then the two adult classes that we have. And then uh, that afternoon will be our PLC Walk for Life at Franklin Park. So we gather together to worship the one who is and who was and who is to come. Uh, we worship our God uh, because he is loving, because he is giving. And so worship is a way and a time for us to express our adoration, our thanks, and our praise of the one whose image we are created in. Let us prepare to worship our Lord. Turn to him 881 and give praise to our God. Let all things now living please stand. Let all things go living a song. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. O Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And it is now time for our children's blue bag message. So all of our young ones and young at heart, please feel free to come forward. Okay, so for those of you from 8 o'clock service, this is familiar with you. Uh, for those of you at 10.30, what we started uh, pretty much a year ago was to have a children's blue bag sermon uh, once a month at the 8 o'clock service, and it's proven to be really intriguing at times, okay? So, but it's a lot of fun, and the kids seem to have a good time with it also. So, good morning, good morning. Good to see, oh, Wow. Okay, we have a very, come on, we have a very determined young, young one here. Whoops, okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. Oh, very good. There we go, huh? All right, Remy. Okay, Lennox, you got the blue bag. Your sisters and you and, and Ariana worked on this. She did this? Okay. Well, let's see what we got in the blue bag. Oh, life savers. Ooh, yum yums, huh? You, you like life savers? Okay. Do you know why they got the name life saver? Because they look like a life saver. All right. So when you're out on the ocean or any boat and they, they've got um, these usually they're white, they're called lifesavers. They got a rope with them sometimes. And if a person accidentally falls overboard, you send, you throw this at them because then it floats and they can grab onto it and it saves their life, hence a life saver, okay? Now, one of the things that, that God specializes in is being a life saver, Alrighty, Because uh, we, we hear in, in Scripture, in fact, it's up on the board right now, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus is God's lifesaver and also our best friend. So that's something good to remember. All right, guys? This was very kind of you, Lennox. Um, are you wanting to share or are you? Okay, so everyone, if you would, let's pass this around and you get to uh, take one. That's very generous of you. Thank you, Lennox. That's most kind. All righty. Okay. All right, now let's see. Typically this is uh, for eight o'clock service already. And uh, we, our last time was May. All right, so Gunner, just pass that along. There you go. All right, and just pick one. Hey, Bailey. Yeah. Lisa Lynn. Excellent. And then Ariana, you're our last one, I believe. Okay. All righty. So who would, who would like to have the blue bag? Anyone in particular? All right, now, Hunter, that means you gotta come to an eight o'clock service. Oh, wow, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is pretty early on a Sunday morning, isn't it? All right, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not gonna paint your parents into a corner on that one, all righty? But maybe some other time, would that be all right? You'll, you'll need to talk with your folks ahead of time saying, is that possible getting up for an eight o'clock service? Or, you know, okay, so. But thank you, and it's great having you boys up here with us. But see, Reed, I don't think Reed hasn't had this uh, in a long time, have you? All right, or should it be, should we give it to Grandpa? And then you get to work with Grandpa. What do you think, Riley, is that a good idea? Okay, all right, guys, there you go. So you two make sure you work with Gramps on that one. 
and have a lot of fun. And then October 1st is when you bring the blue bag, okay? So the first Sunday of October, which is the first. Oh, by the way, guys, here, let's stand up, all righty? And because of our Lifesaver message, and, and I get it, really, this is the sermon, the main sermon for the day. And based on what we have up on, on the screens there, let's turn around to the congregation. And on the count of three, I want you to shout out to them, God loves you, because that's the message that's on the screens there. Are you able to use your outdoor voice? This is the one time in worship, um, unless you're singing, all right, that you can use your outdoor voice, okay? So let's face everybody. One, two, three. God loves you. All right, now let's add a little mustard on that one, okay? One, two, three. God loves you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, we'll just, we'll go with that, all right? You guys, excellent. It's now time. Oh, that's right. It's now time for Noah's Park Children's Church. There we go. Prayer of Illumination. Before reading from the Bible, we seek the illumination of the Holy Spirit that we become receptive to the life-giving word which comes to us through both the reading and proclamation of scripture. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today Amen. From the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verses 7 through 11, renewal of Ezekiel's calling from God. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade them from their ways, that wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not do so, they will die for their sin, though you yourself will be saved. Son of man, say to the Israelites, this is what you are saying. Our offenses and sins weigh us down, and we are wasting away because of them. How can we live? Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Please read responsively with me from the book of Psalm, verses one, from the chapter of 119, verses 33 through 40, the way of the Lord. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Give me understanding, so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your statutes, and not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from the worthless things, preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant, so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace I dread, for your laws are good. How I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, preserve my life. From the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 14, love fulfills the law. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another, for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. The day is near. 
and do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in the carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immortality, and not debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The good news of the Holy Gospel for you, God's people, as it is written in the Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Jesus tells us, No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Word of God, word of life. And please be seated. If you wish to keep your bulletin open uh, to that page, our gospel reading, because we are going to focus on verse 16, but also that which is around us, but primarily the 16th verse of John 3. And one of the things that we begin right off the bat in understanding is, is quite simply this, God loves you. Hmm. I think we heard that just a few minutes ago somewhere, didn't we? Now maybe you thought, well, of course he does. It's what I've heard all my life in Jesus' story, God loves me. You may be one who still wrestles and struggles with that, that indeed God does love you. All of our faults and foibles, our our hang-ups, our sins, yeah, he still loves us. God is not a, quote, sunshine friend that bails when things get tough. He promised to always love us and to accept us and to be with us. Now, the original uh, language of the New Testament, there are a number of different words that can be chosen for, for love. In English, we have just one word. But in the original biblical Greek, there's a number of, of words that can be used. Storge, which is family love. Eros, where we get the word erotic, that's sexual love. Then there's philios, like in philios delphos, city of brotherly love. So this is that friendship love. Came across this uh, A few weeks ago, I think this could really help make the world a little bit better. The most powerful friendships are forged between one person who likes crispy fries and one who likes soft fries, okay? Now, I tend to be a crispy fry person. How many like crispy fries? Okay, how many of you go for the soft fries? All right, so, and some of you, you're within the same family, and you still get along, at least sometimes. All right. So the, the point here is this, especially in, a, in the, the uh, age of polarity that, that we live in, it's like, no, crispy fries is the only way. I can't believe those knuckle brains think that soft fries are the way to go, or vice versa. And yet the understanding that you can believe what you believe and still cross the aisle and have a good, solid friendship with that other person who does not believe the same way that you do. 
By the way, um, mark this on your calendars right now, that uh, National Fry Day is going to be July 12th of 2024. So I know this is very important. Please mark this down. And a way for you to easily remember it, I'm kidding you not, July 12th of next year is on what day of the week? Friday. Yes, imagine that. But then there's the other word, which is what John, the disciple, uses in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, and that is agape. And agape is this God-like, sacrificial love. It is the absolute supreme form of love that anyone can give. And this is not only what God does, this is who God is. And believe it or not, it is unconditional. We have people in our lives in which, yeah, of course I love you, as long as you do what I tell you to do. Well, of course we love you, if you're, as long as uh, you agree with me. And things like, that's conditional love. God loves you unconditionally, even when we turn our back on him. He loves us. There's this story that I want to share with you. I don't think it's, it's a true story, but it does convey the meaning. Uh, it says that Danny was born with, with no ears. I've never met anyone who was born with no ears, but I believe this uh, can indeed happen somehow, some way. He could hear really well, but he didn't have ears like other people. So as you can imagine, in school, uh, he endured incredible ridicule. Fortunately, he had loving parents and a very supportive family. Now, when he was in high school, a doctor told him that there was a new procedure that came out in which he could get a set of ears, but it was contingent upon someone donating. Now, we're familiar with organ donors. I mean, uh, within our own congregation, donation of a liver. Okay, Jason Stecksholdy to Carol Motika. But there's also like lung and, and uh, heart and kidney transplants, donations, uh, skin donation as well. But ears, extremely rare. So Dana graduated from high school, went off to work, moved away, quite a long ways away from his folks. But one day he got a phone call from his dad. He said, son, you need to come home. You need to go to the hospital. They have a set of ears for you. And so what proceeded uh, was the surgery. And when things healed up and the bandages were taken off and Danny for the first time was able to look into a mirror, and my gosh, magnificent set of ears. It was a game changer for him. So he went back to work about uh, 500 miles away from family. Life went uh, along. But then a few months later, he got another call from his dad, and he said, Danny, you need to come home as soon as you can. Uh, your mother is very ill, and we don't know if she'll make it through the night. So he got on the first plane he possibly could, and when he arrived, his father gave him the sad news that his mother had died. So they went to the funeral home for one last goodbye before calling hours and services. And Danny, at the casket, leaned over to give his mother one last kiss on the cheek. And he brushed the hair back from her face. And he noticed that his mother had no ears. She had donated them to her son. Sacrificial love. Agape love. This is the type of love that God is. That God loves you. For God so loved the world. But how do we know that? Because of this. That he gave his one and only son. Now if love or loving is the first foremost primary word that describes God. If someone were to ask you who does not know God. You know, tell me about who this God is that you go and worship and you believe and that you follow and you dedicate your life to. This is the word, love. But then there's a close second word that we see in the whole counsel of God, from Genesis to Revelation, from cover to cover, and that is not only is God loving, but God is also giving. So if you were to share with someone about the character of our God at the very top of the list, first is love or loving, second is giving. 
For God so loved the world that he gave. Talk about the supreme sacrifice. He gave his one and only son. We see that in the 14th verse, just Jesus is saying this, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness. This is in the book of Numbers, the fourth book of the Old Testament, and therefore the fourth book of the Bible. And this is where the people of Israel had escaped the mass exodus out of Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, and now they're wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And for God's people, the Lord delivering them from slavery, crossing the, splitting the waters of the Red Sea so they could cross, be uh, in the wilderness, and he's constantly providing for them, but it still wasn't good enough, and they begin to moan and groan and rebel against God. He allows snakes to enter into the camp. People are dying from being bitten by these poisonous snakes. Moses reaches out to God, and the Lord says to him, form this bronze serpent on a pole and lift it up so that people can look up to it. And when they look up to it, my power will save them, and they will live. When you go and you see on ambulances and medical buildings and all, and there's a pole and one or two serpents on it, this is the basis of that story. That is the basis of those symbols. And so Jesus is saying, just as Moses lifted up that bronze serpent in the wilderness so that people could look up to that and be saved, so too must the Son of Man, Jesus, be lifted up on a cross so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Now, two weekends ago, Bob Barker died at the age of 99. For 35 years, from 1972 to 2007, he was the host of what game show? Price is Right. Yes, some of you, I think, are quite fans of this. It's a fun show. Drew Carey has been host since then. Um, but, you know, The Price is Right, it just really speaks to our culture, doesn't it? I mean, Mariano Pacetti, come on down. You're our next contestant on The Price is Right. And then you have those people lined up there, and they're trying to guess the right price on something that's on stage. And the one who gets it, of course, they're jumping up and down and going all crazy. Uh, there have been accidents over the years on the shows, everything from people tripping to separated shoulders on the big wheel. I mean, it just happens. I don't know if the hosts have ever been injured from uh, wild contestants. It is quite a sight. And then they have to play a game of chance, and if they get it right, I mean, they can win, like, the furniture or a new car or a vacation trip of a lifetime. And when it comes to God loving and God giving and sending, lifting up, giving his one and only son, the price is right. The crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. John, the disciple, puts it this way in his first letter of John. Now listen to the flow and the poetry and as well as the meaning of what John the disciple is saying here. John is the author of the disciple of Jesus, John is the author of the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, what I'm going to read to you from now. And then uh, many believe he is also the author of the book of Revelation. From chapter 4 of 1st John, verse 7 onward, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who has been born of God knows God. Whoever does not love they don't know God, because God is love. There's a three-word confession in our faith right there. God is love. And this is how God showed his love among us. How do we know that God is love? Well, he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son, gave his son, lifted up his son, as we see in that language in chapter 3 as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. If you want to call it French fry love, so be it. John doesn't say that. I'm saying that. Just No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. And then in verse 19, we love 
because God first loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now this word believe, think of it as has a relationship with Jesus. Whoever has a relationship in Jesus shall not be lost, shall not perish, shall not be condemned, but have eternal life. If you want to know what is it in Jesus we're called to believe, what does that look like? Here is a great spiritual exercise for you. This is what I recommend to folks who are wanting to go deeper in the faith. Take the Gospel of John, because the word believe is throughout John. This is his heavy emphasis. So look at the Gospel of John, and any time there is the word believe, or a form of the word believe, so it can be believe, unbeliever, unbeliever, believing, unbelieving, okay, belief, any variation of that word, and circle it, highlight it, or write in a notepad next to you, and you'll see all this just jump out from chapter 1 to chapter 21 of John. It's a great exercise, and it helps you begin to see what is it that we are called to believe? What is that type of relationship we're asked to have with our Lord Jesus? Now, here's something else to know. And that is the word eternal life. Oh, yeah, that means after you die, you, you know, you live forever. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, yes. In John's gospel, that's only half of the equation. Because the previous half of the equation is, once we have a relationship with the Lord Jesus, that's when eternal life begins. Meaning, eternal life in Christ begins in this lifetime, before death, and then continues into the kingdom of heaven after death. Let's go a little bit further on this. This is Loch Ness, or Lake Ness, in Scotland. Okay, Crystal and I have been there. It is gorgeous. It is beautiful. It's 22 square miles, and its maximum depth is 788 feet. Now, a few weekends ago, hundreds of volunteers descended upon Loch Ness to canvas this huge lake to try to find once and for all if there is indeed a Loch Ness monster, which has affectionately throughout the years been known as Nessie. They use hydrophones, which detect sounds underwater. They use drones equipped with infrared cameras, which produce thermal images. This is the biggest search in 50 years since 1972, and they came up with nothing. Now, the history of the Loch Ness Monster is that it stretches back to the year 565, supposedly, when the Irish monk St. Columba made what may be history's first recorded Nessie sighting, because as the story goes in the article that I read, he confronted the monster which had been terrorizing locals and banished it into the loch or the lake. But it became a global phenomenon 90 years ago in 1933 when a hotel manager said that her and her husband had been chased around and been harassed by a creature that looked like a whale in the lake. And then a few months afterwards that same year, a man named Hugh Gray took the first alleged photo of the creature from the northern shore of the loch, hence Nessie. Now, supposedly in the 20th and 21st centuries, over 1,100 sightings have been recorded of the Loch Ness Monster. Now, as a side note, I gotta tell you, this shows about um, the shrewdness and, and wittiness of uh, Scottish people. That is, in 1990, Crystal and I went over to Scotland. This was on our own. And we decided, well, when you're there, you might as well go around Loch Ness and just see things. And we came across what was the Loch Ness Monster Original Museum, and yet right next door to it was the Loch Ness Monster Official Museum. Original Museum, Official Museum. Which one do you visit? So there was an employee that we spotted in the parking lot just smoking a cigarette. We walked over at home and said, which one would you recommend to see, the original or the official? And he goes, oh man, it matters not because they're owned by the same person. 
Now, I think that's rather shrewd business, is it not, to compete against yourself? You own, the, you own both of them, so you're going to benefit no matter what. I can't remember which one we went in. Yeah, it's kind of a tourist ripoff thing, but it was a fun thing to do nonetheless. So there are people that really believe that Nessa exists. It's great for the local economy with the tourism. But, you know, really? Does it? All right. Honestly. Perhaps it's a fairy tale, make-believe, whatever, just for publicity. But when it comes to God being loving and God being giving, we are invited to take the step of faith, which is getting more challenging in our world today to do so. But to take that step, that this is historical, actual, factual, that God indeed loves, does love you, that he loves the world, and to show us such, gave his one and only son, and that by believing him, we can have eternal life. And it's a life that can begin not just after we die, but now to enjoy Christ in our life and to experience the kingdom of God, not in total fullness, but to get a foretaste of the feast to come, a sneak preview of that. You see, in this life, God restores us to the one who created us, our truly giving, loving, amazing, powerful God. And that in Christ, we get to reclaim our original intention to reflect the image of God in our humanity. Just as the moon reflects the light of the sun. This is who we were always meant to be. And no wonder why Jesus said, I came that you may have that kind of life and have it abundantly. And so eternal life, which begins in this life, then also carries over in all of its beauty and splendor and glory and perfection in the next, in the kingdom of heaven. Or as we hear into the second to the last chapter of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, as we conclude for today, Jesus saying to John the disciple in this vision as he is exiled on Patmos, the island, they will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. And he will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying. No more pain. For the old order of things has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, I am making all things new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. And those who are victorious will inherit all this. And I will be their God. And they will be my people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hymn 656, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, please stand.
please be seated. Those who usually attend the 8 o'clock service know this is the time I get up here and say a couple of words and, and play something. That's what I'm going to do. It's a musical meditation. If you're not, if you go to the 10.30 service, I don't usually do it then. But uh, I thought this was an especially appropriate time to do the song I'm going to do. It says there, Dove of Peace. And that is the actual name of the tune of this, of this particular hymn. It's found in number 482 in our hymnal. The, two, the first words are, I come with joy, a child of God. How many of you have heard that before? Yeah, it's not real well known around here, but it is a beautiful, beautiful song. It sounds like this. I come with joy, a child of God, forgive. It's in our, the Holy Communion section of our hymnal, and it is considered to be a communion song, but in a sense, it really goes with what Pastor was talking about today, about the love of God, and then the love that we find among ourselves here as Christians. If you look at the rest of those words, real quick, I think I'm going to blow up. Okay, all right, I still, they want to go, eh, there comes the blue. Yeah, could you back that off a little bit? Thank you. Mm. Okay, I come with Christians far and near to find, as all are fed, the new community of love in Christ's communion bread. That's the second verse. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share, each proud division ends. The love that made us, the love of God, makes us one. And strangers now are friends. The spirit of the risen Christ, unseen but ever near, is in such friendship better known, alive among us here. Together met, together bound by all that God has done, we'll go with joy to give the world the love that makes us one. I come with joy, a child of God. Together we turn to page 105 in the front of our hymnals. With the whole church, let us proclaim our resurrection faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and for all of God's creation. Well, God, you are Yahweh, God of faithfulness, who is worthy of our trust. You are Elohim, God of the galaxies, the most dangerous safe power in all of creation. And you are El Shaddai, God to whom is approachable night and day. We pray for Sean and Kim Kimmett, and A.J. Wiseman, Nancy Gardner, Jacob Hart, Kirsten Rehm, Mark Hoagland, and for the family and friends of Jersey Poff and Ross Myers. Lord, may you be honored and glorified with today's Rally Day worship and activities for the meal that we are going to experience soon downstairs. We offer you this prayer. But Lord, we thank you for the food before us, the friends beside us, the love between us, and your presence among us. For you, Lord, are our refuge and strength. We turn to you for peace and security as we recall the attack of 9-11. We thank you for the bravery and the sacrifice of those who saved lives as firefighters, rescue crews, or people aboard United 93. Continue to comfort and strengthen the family and friends of those who died. For in commemorating this tragedy, we give you thanks for your presence in our time of need. And we seek to worship you in spirit and in truth, our guide and our guardian. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the peace of our God with one another. We turn to page 112 for the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the week to come, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Just a reminder, immediately following service, we are all invited, whether you're brought food or not, we are all invited downstairs to come together and join in table fellowship for a meal, followed by uh, games for people, children, and big kids alike of all ages. So we are sent out into God's creation as the hands and feet of Jesus. Let us join together 836 and give glory to our God, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Mm -hmm. 